Annihilation, or Queen Amidala fights the mutant space bubble. Basically, it's meant to be like an old-timey sci-fi film, but it plays it completely straight and very, very heavy. Our protagonist is a former soldier turned biology professor. And she's been through some stuff. It almost looks like she's suffering from PTSD, but she hasn't really seen enough combat to have that. The PTSD comes from her life, which we discover throughout the film. She gets basically drafted by some government people studying this weird alien bubble thing called the Shimmer. And her involvement is catalyzed when her husband, who she thought was gone for good, comes back sick as a dog with memory gaps. Because he was the only person to come out of the Shimmer. So she joins a ragtag group of female scientist soldiers and ventures in to figure out what the heck is going on. And as soon as you get in the bubble, things feel four kinds of wrong. The landscape looks familiar, but there's this little lizard brain in the back of your head saying, this is not what it's supposed to be. And as they progress farther into the center of the disturbance, you definitely see why the lizard brain was telling you to get the heck out of Dodge. Portman plays her character kind of like she's sleepwalking, but not in a bad way. The actor isn't sleepwalking, the character is. She's been through some stuff and she's still kind of in shock, both from losing her guy and getting him back and being thrust into this new situation. And it's very overwhelming for all of them. The rest of the cast, pretty cookie cutter. There's one who's kind of chill, one who's an introvert, one who's an extrovert, one who's like Captain Ahab. And all five of them, Portman included, have one thing in common. A damaged past. We find a little bit about each character through exposition, but they're basically getting to know each other as they travel. Because they all start out as a mystery. But as you progress through the story, you can see where each of them are going to go plot-wise. And unfortunately, it isn't very good. Well, for them at least. The film was... The film was fairly entertaining, for me at least. Each character has a chip on her shoulder, but none of them were unlikable. Especially the Captain Ahab type, who I immediately knew was Captain Ahab right from the off. There's just something about her that said Ahab Every time she spoke, I just heard white whale, white whale, white whale, white whale. <laughs> Anywho, uh, apart from Isaac, uh, Jason Isaac, aka Poe Dameron, holy heck, 
played uh, Portman's guy. And he was the only in-depth male character. The rest were just window dressing. And it was interesting to see an all-female group um, go through this situation. I mean, yeah, there was a similar group in The Descent, but... I don't know, something about them in Descent rubbed me the wrong way. I wanted to follow these soldier scientists more. And honestly, I thought they all did a pretty good job of conveying the vulnerability they all had without appearing weak or timid. Although, twice, one character mentioned that such and such was heavy. And I thought to myself, okay, she's more scientist than soldier. Because soldiers normally don't complain like that. But it didn't get grating on the nerves. What did grate a little bit was that they chopped up the footage. So you started out in the middle of the story, then went back to the beginning, then back and forth, and to two other places at times. It made it a little hard to follow, but it wasn't terrible. I don't really favor that particular bit of a form of filmmaking, but it didn't kill the movie for me. Now, as for the look of the shimmer, the outside layer, yes, it does look like a bubble. You see the, the rainbow, well, shimmers that are quite familiar to you if you've ever blown a single soap bubble. As for the interior, it starts out pretty normal looking, but like I said, there's something about it that just hits you in your animal brain. And we haven't even gotten to the creatures yet, who were, I think, mostly CG with a little bit of practical work. They ranged from beautiful to terrifying. There, I don't want to get into too much detail, but some of the creatures looked like they were adapting nicely, while others were literally fighting tooth and claw to avoid the change. And you saw some of this internal battle with the soldiers themselves, both with uh, Jason Isaac's group, as seen in archival footage, picked up throughout the film, and with the current group. It was kind of like Blair Witch, but done slightly better, and with no first-person stuff, with the exception of the found footage that they actually did find. The score started out as somber to convey a sense of melancholy, which I thought kind of worked. The final confrontation at the center of the shimmer, that was punctuated by these loud, sonorous, resonant tones that I think might have been tweaked by J.J. Abrams. They weren't exactly his signature boom sound, but they were close. They were meant to sound alien and unsettling and to really hit you in your rib cage and make you feel ill at ease, which honestly worked for me. The ending was okay. Like I said, I don't want to spoil it, but it may or may not have left room for a sequel. But honestly, I thought it was a little too cerebral and minimalist for the sequel bait. It's not for everyone, 
Some might find it a little boring because it did sort of plot along at a slow pace. I mean, the film itself was two hours, give or take a few minutes, and they probably could have cut a few bits out in order to shore it up a bit. But other than that, I thought Annihilation was interesting. Not terrible, not awesome, just okay. This is Mr. J, signing out and reminding you all to never check out a meteor, even if it starts growing the bubble.